The world as we know it is rapidly changing and it's changing in more than one way. Today's way that we're going to discuss is climate change. <laughs> welcome to Sandra said what today we are talking about climate change and global warming what are they is there a difference should we even care I will talk to you and I will let you know in a few minutes so stay tuned don't forget send me your questions Sandra said what at gmail.com and then facebook.com forward slash Sandra said what Instagram Sandra n-e-i-k-o Nico and what else Twitter Sandra underscore normal n-o-r-m-i-l Without further ado, we're gonna get into it. What are people talking about when they say global warming? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Global warming basically refers to a gradual increase of the Earth's temperature and its atmosphere and ecosystem. Climate change, however, refers to change in certain patterns in certain areas of the Earth, such as the Arctic, which we know the glaciers are melting, that's changing. Climate change is actually a side effect of global warming. I know people are thinking, oh my gosh, it's the end of the days, it's the last days, the time have come, and this and that and the third. But the reality is, as we change our planet, it starts behaving differently. Eagerly, we feel our own illusion of progress at the direct expense of the Earth's natural resources. So all these new technology and these advancements that we're making, at what point we are creative and curious to a fault and we will be the end of us. We like to say that we're killing the planet. In reality, we're not click killing the planet. The planet is forever changing. It would change a lot slower if we were not involved. But guess what? It will change and get it, it will eliminate us. We are making it inhabitable for us. And what the planet's always gonna be here. Energy is never lost or stolen. It's never it only transferred so this energy is going to transfer to something else later on but we are just going to cease to be here insatiable for new products and thinking that we are making advancement we are actually destroying the planet at a much faster pace that we are capable of repairing it what causes global warming you may ask okay so this is how it works mass production the need for a lot of new computers and not a lot of new toys a lot of new this and a new cars releases a lot of carbon dioxide in the air which is then absorbed into infrared heat what happens is what when that's absorbed it's released back into the air and we as a people we consume it that's why there's a lot of new development in cancer it causes it is cancerous not only to us it's also cancerous to animals as well by now i'm sure many most people if not most people have heard about the greenhouse effect Personally, I used to think it was like a house with greenhouses and things like that, but no. Greenhouse gases actually refer to radioactivity gases, radioactivity active gases. That's simply what it means, gases that are very radioactive. Greenhouse effect actually refers to the warming of a planet by radiation, which is then above temperature radiation. Why should we be concerned about the globe changing and the planet changing? I mean, it would change anyway. Well, the problem with the way the planet is changing is that the products of our labors is quickening the pace at which it is changing and we cannot properly rehabilitate or fix the planet with equanimity. It shouldn't matter what political affiliations you are part of, whatever it is, Global warming is real, it is not a myth, it's not like the tooth fairy, it is not Bigfoot, it's not something that's not happening, we can see the effects of it. Now, I know I was just talking about carbon dioxide being released into the air, which is a type of air pollution, but there are all kinds of pollution. There's light pollution, there's air pollution, there's thermal heat pollution, there's water pollution as well. Chemicals released into the air causes pollution, but not only does it cause pollution, but I'm going to give you an example. For example, light pollution, if you think about it, it's like if lighting, we have nocturnal animals, that means they function with lighting. They, when it's light out, they know it's time to go out and eat. When it's night out, it's, they know it's time to go inside and sleep and to stay away and safe from predators. Now, since we are a mass producing world and we have to operate day and night to produce products for other people to use to consume for consumers, the problem with that is 
now we have light at night and they're not knowing that you know it's nighttime to stay inside they go outside and they become prey and that's how a lot of animals are not becoming extinct and are becoming endangered imagine if we're living on top of a big giant right and then we are moving around and poking and this and that and the giant feels something and it turns a group of people died there's a hurricane and things like that just to put it in perspective for you but the giant is still sleeping and then we poke it enough to where the giant turns around now everybody what's gonna happen everybody's gonna fall over people are gonna die and things like that and guess what once that giant wakes up and get up everybody's falling off everybody's feeling the heat everybody's gonna be in danger so it is not inclusive or exclusive to just people who have money or people who don't have money this is really a global problem that we are all affected by and the worst part of it is that the poor people are going to be the ones affected first how that happened is if you I know people who are snowbirds snowbirds are people who live in Florida when it's cooler here when it's too cold up north they come down or when it's too hot here they go back up guess what they can avoid Florida during hurricane season and when hurricane season happens they are safe but guess what people who can't afford to move are at a bigger risk and people who don't have housing in so-called third world countries where the houses are not able to withstand the impacts of hurricanes and typhoons and things that happen natural natural disasters which wouldn't be occurring in the first place so those people end up impacted the most but guess what it's not going to be exclusive to just those people eventually we're all going to be affected by it the rapid heating of the planet is causing the glaciers to melt melt in the arctic there's a saying that says what happens in the arctic does not stay in the arctic guess what when that water start, starts melting it's going to spread around and it's going to cause a lot of typhoons and hurricanes and tsunamis by the way a typhoon and a tsunami are they're the same thing they are just named based on the point of origin a hurricane is like storms that occur in the in the Atlantic and the Pacific they're named hurricanes but those that happen in Northwest Pacific I believe they're named typhoons but they're the same thing but the point is that when those glaciers start melting and this water starts moving around and it's going to cause violent storms which are referred to as hurricanes and when those hurricanes make landfall by the way hurricanes when they have made landfall as bad as they have been in the past few years they haven't made landfall when they are the strongest if they were to make landfall when they are at their most powerful they can liter literally wipe out a whole entire nation that's how serious this is i heard someone said oh i'm seriously said I'm kind of glad for global warming because it's cold in Florida this is not something we should be happy about because once this happens it's only gonna make matters much much worse and if we continue disturbing the ecosystem the way that we have been the news will only get worse as time go by as much as we would like to think that we are self-sufficient and independent no one and nothing is truly independent we cannot survive without food we cannot survive without water we cannot survive without oxygen nothing is self-sufficient so if we think we don't need the planet we can do better we can ch we are destroying the only place that we have to live people would say like well we're in mars now but how fast of a progress and how quickly could we get to there and comparing to how quickly we are making things change we are just a chain of innumerable living things that succeeded the others for over the past 200,000 years we weren't here before and there will be a time when we're no longer here let's be realistic about that if we claim that we're so smart and so superior to other animals let's earn that okay let's respect the oneness of our globe we all are interconnected and we cannot survive without the things that we are destroying. Our mission of consumption is at the Earth's direct expense and in turn our own survival. Today about half of the Earth's population which is about 3.5 billion people live within cities that account for 80% of the Earth's energy use. About half account for 
take that in now we are trying to make some progress and use renewable energy but not nearly as much as we should be using and not nearly as fast as we should be doing it almost on a daily basis there's some kind of forest fires and california stays burning up it's hot over there because we are burning it up and not in even in a good way it's not even like nelly's getting hot in here it's like damn we're gonna kill ourselves I know there are political leaders who say that it's being made up, it's not true. The evidence is here. It's everywhere. We have tsunamis, crazy tsunamis, or hurricanes are becoming more violent than ever. And we have earthquake, much more dangerous earthquake. And I think I read somewhere that scientists wanted to dig deeper into the Earth's surface where there's more gooey stuff. <laughs> if I could put it that way so you understand and hot burning things imagine a volcano is burning and under that you know you want to disturb that y'all yeah. okay so if you guys have any input any ideas if you want to make a difference it's not it's, it's not even an option at this point it's either we add oh we're gonna be gone yes bottom line but um, if you have any input any questions comments concern you can always Google, look into it, light pollution. I recently, in the, my last semester before I graduated, did a paper on light pollution. Light pollution is very real. Um, the man-made lighting that we use is not very friendly to the Earth's ecosystem. It's not very friendly to our animals. It's not even very friendly to us. Because us, as a people, we are nocturnal animals. What that means is we operate by day and night light. Suppose we are supposed to be asleep when it's daytime, nighttime. That's why when the night comes, we fall, we are sleeping. Even if we were up all day, I don't know. People who have weird sleeping patterns, you don't count. But at nighttime, we're supposed to be asleep. And during daytime, that's how we know to move and do things. But now, we're up at all kinds of hours. Even our own sleep patterns is disturbed. Not only that, it prevents us from even seeing properly. Our eyes, it really does have impact on our eyes but you guys thank you for watching let me know questions it doesn't matter the topic one second i'm talking about donald trump the next i'm talking about climate change the next i'm talking about somebody breaking up with their boyfriend so let me know your questions comments or concerns so i just said what at gmail.com i will see you next time la 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 that's it